friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I decided to add this little front end on this video so that I could explain what you're about to see. First of all, this is the very first time I've ever tried to make my own varnish, so I had no experience whatsoever doing this and, you know, didn't really know what to expect. Obviously, I will know what to expect next time. I made some bad mistakes. And so you're going to see those mistakes because I figure you'll benefit from them and learn from them. If I do another video on it down the road, I obviously will know to do things differently and a little better. In other words, there's some things in here that are very unsafe. Making old school varnish out of the oil varnishes and the turpentines and things, there's a lot of stuff that's very flammable, namely the turpentine. And you will see that I proved that point in this video and I didn't edit it out. I could have easily edited it out and you would never have known there was a problem. But I decided to leave it in there and just take my uh, lashes because I know there'll be plenty of smart alecks that have to give you the tongue lashing, you know. I was smart enough to take it outside, do it outside. Definitely if you decide to do this kind of thing, be sure you do it outside. You don't do this inside. The, f the vapors that come off of it are very toxic also. So you want to let it get plenty of air. You want to wear protective clothing, which I did not. I wore shorts uh, doing this. I didn't have any, you know, significant issue other than it did catch fire. And you'll just know that going in. Um, but I also had my welding leather gloves on when that happened. In hindsight, you have perfect 2020 vision. So I'm just telling you up front, I made some mistakes. I won't make those mistakes again. And, uh, you know, at least I did take enough precautions so that those mistakes that I made didn't really cause any serious problem. The varnish turned out pretty good, but you'll see all that in the video. Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here outside the Rosa String Works workshop today. We're going to be doing something totally different. I'm brand new at varnish making. This is my very first attempt. I've never done it before, but I've always wanted to try. So I did like all the rest of you do. I watch a YouTube video and I saw a fella doing it. And I will just first tell you that there are as many recipes for varnish as there are luthiers. So this is just one recipe. It doesn't necessarily mean this is the way to go. I mainly, my main requirement is I want it to be an oil varnish, not a spirit, spirit varnish. Spirit varnishes are generally uh, what you would say are alcohol based. And I don't want an alcohol based varnish. I want a oil based varnish. In my opinion, they're a better uh, sound producer and uh, it's the type of varnish that I believe was used on most of the older um, traditional violins like Stradivari etc. So anyway that's what we're doing. Now we're, the, the basis of this, uh, of this oil varnish has got two resins. One of them is Damar resin and I would like to bring that up there so you can read the label and you can pause your video. All right, so you can look at that and, and see what this is. That's the Damar resin. And this is um, just pine resin. It's nothing special, just pine resin. Or it says pine rosin, actually. And I got those right off eBay. As a matter of fact, everything I'm using here, I pretty much got right off eBay. The base oil that we're using, in this case, it says refined linseed oil and you can see it's a very clear oil. I don't really have exact measurements. This is all trial and error for me. I've just, I watched the guy's video. He wasn't real detailed. Uh, he just showed the process and what he did. The first thing I'm doing now is I've heated up some water and the water's pretty hot. I have some hardwood ash in here with a, uh, might as well just show you. This is just some hardwood ash and a, a coffee filter, and I'm going to filter the hot water through that. You do, you do need some ash water and some lime as, uh, as part of the ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, this water is pretty hot. Maybe it's a, even a hair too hot for, for plastic. I'm not sure. We'll try a little bit and see. 
burned maple, walnut, and cherry. And it's filtering through there pretty slowly, but I think that's probably going to be all we need. We don't need a lot of this according to the picture, according to what I saw him do. And that was one of the first things we had to do was make about a half a cup of filtered water, or ash water. According to him, he said it helps with the coloring and the oxidation. I don't even know what that means, you know, other than the coloring, obviously. I have no idea what he means by oxidation. Linseed oil, we need to cook that until it becomes darker and thicker. So we're going to, I'm going to put the linseed oil in this pot here, I believe. I've got 250 milliliters of each of these resins, so that's about 500 milliliters. I'm trying to do a, a, about a third oil, a third resin, and a a third turpentine later. That's what we're going to be doing here. That's just, and those are just guesses on the numbers. I truly don't know. It was 150 milliliters on each of uh, these resins, by the way. I don't know what I said, but I'm just going to pour some oil in this pot, and this is a 500 milliliter. Maybe a little more than a third. I'm, well, I'm not sure if it is or not. That bottle gets a lot bigger down here. That's probably close enough. Again, it's just trial and error, so I'm just doing it by the seat of my pants. We're going to have to heat this up and uh, let it boil. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a few minutes. Well, it's been about 15 minutes, and uh, you can see this pot's starting to melt pretty good. Those are the resins in there. This is the linseed oil. It has not yet begun to boil. Um, I want to take it up to close to boiling temperature. It's not, I wouldn't say we want it boiling hard or anything, but we want to start to see it kind of simmer real good. And then we're going to let that simmer for, you know, a while. It needs to turn darker and thicker. Well, I'm not sure if I got all that on camera or not. I, if I didn't, I apologize. I just added the lime ash water to this, and that caused the resin to kind of get a little bit hard again. And what we're basically going to do is boil this long enough to get the resin back to liquid and boil off all the water. And that's really what we're doing here. This isn't exactly how it was supposed to turn out right here, but it will not turn loose. <laughs> there you go. We'll let it sit there and boil again. I may have not done that the best. I, may, I probably should have had the resin a little hotter before I added the uh, ash water. Like I said, this is all trial and error, guys. So, you know, you gotta start somewhere and this is my start right here. Since this is all basically trial and error, I moved the resin over to this side because this is the hotter side of this little hot plate. And I'm wanting to boil that water off and melt this resin back down and this just needs to cook and simmer like it's doing and that's doing just fine I think on this side. It's been another five or ten minutes. It's supposed to take a little over an hour I would think to do this, maybe maybe two hours at the most. Well the water is nearly boiled off on this but not quite and therefore maybe when the water finishes boiling off this will turn back to liquid. I didn't really expect this to solidify so much when I put the water in there so that kind of surprised me. Maybe I didn't have the resin hot enough when I added the water, I don't know. But it was pretty liquidy, it was just pouring around. so. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. It's probably been cooking another 30 minutes or so. You can see now the resin is pretty much liquid now and uh, pretty much dissolved, no problem. I see one little dark spot in there. I'm going to see if I can dip that out. I don't know what that is. A little dark spot there. We'll get rid of that. I don't think that's going to matter because we're going to strain all this in a little bit. But I believe we're at about a, a place where we need to add our oil. It sure does seem like it's good and liquidy now, as you can see. 
and I have no idea what's going to happen when we put the oil in there. So I've got my welding gloves, as you might see here, and I'm going to stand way back and pour uh, the the linseed oil into the resin. So here we go. Doesn't seem like it's going to react, so I'm just going to pour it in there. That worked just fine. And now we're going to... I'm going to use this same pot, I think, to heat up some uh, turpentine. So there's your resin and turpentine mixture. It's melted together pretty well. It's looking pretty good. My buddy Ron is stirring up the uh, resin and the oil and we've got the turpentine on, a, on the lowest heat setting and we're just warming it up and I believe it's already pretty warm. But we're, we got to do a, what they call a string test on this. When you put a drop of it on something, you take your finger and you lift it up, that drop, and you, it should put a long string. And you want to get it roughly about five centimeters worth of string. And right now, I can tell you, it doesn't do any string at all. So we've got some cooking to go. Probably another 15 or 20 minutes at least. It's been cooking another 10 minutes or so, and the varnish is getting a little darker, maybe a little bit thicker. You can see the steam coming off of it there. I'm just getting a, a drop, putting a drop on there, and when that cools a little bit, then we do what we call the string test. <laughs> All right, so let's try the string test now. And what the idea is, is when you touch this, you're supposed to lift it up and create a string. There's a little bit of a string going on, but very little. Just only, it's only going about, oh, a half inch, a little over a centimeter maybe, something like that. We're shooting for, we want to get four or five centimeters. All right, we're gonna do another real quick string test. It's been cooking another five minutes or so. You're supposed to do the string test every so often just to, so that you kind of catch it at the right moment. I'm cooling that off just by blowing on it. And then we'll see if we get any kind of a lift on here. Yeah, it's getting a little sticky. Still not doing all that great though, to be perfectly honest. And it could be that I'm not letting it cool off enough here. I don't really know how, how cool I'm supposed to let it get before I do the string test. <clears throat> it's been cooking another five minutes or so, and we do the string test every so often. So, try to show it where you can see that, see it's starting to pull off of there now. <clears throat> So another five or ten minutes, it may be good. It's been cooking another five minutes. And I believe we're real close to our string test now. I'm going to do another one right here and show you. And then we'll try another string test here. It's sticking pretty good now. We're getting up. Oh, we're getting up three or four centimeters, I think. And it's a little it's a little bit warm still. As it cools, it goes further. You can see it. It's going a little further now. So, I think we'll let it cook about just another couple minutes, and then we're going to add the turpentine. The 
turpentine's been warming up for quite a while now and I think we're going to go ahead and add some in here and I'm not exactly sure how much I want to add Well, we had a little minor catastrophe there, and I was afraid of that. The, the uh, turpentine did flash, and that's okay. I mean, it didn't really create any big major problem. We just put it out. We put a pot on top of it and put it out. I, I, I'm not cooking it anymore at this point. It's just, you know, it's pretty much finished, I believe. And we've thinned it out some. It might be a little too thin, I'm not sure. I may have added too much turpentine, maybe is why it flashed. But we took precautions, we had gloves on and everything, so when it flashed like that, and I kind of expected that with that turpentine, because it does catch fire. So you have to be careful. But it looks all right to me, I don't think there's any real problem, no harm done. So I think we're going to cheesecloth it into the bottle and see what happens. Okay, I believe we're in good shape. We're going to pour our oil down through this cheesecloth and put it in the bottle. At least that's the plan. Well, it looks like it did get a little darker than we wanted. That may may have caused it to get too dark. I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to be that dark. So, I don't know. This may have been a total fail. We won't know until we try it out, I guess. But it does look pretty dark. It didn't look that dark until the fire, so maybe when the fi when it caught fire, that may have caused a problem. Well, Ron and I went to lunch. You can see how thick the uh, varnish has gotten there. It's it's thickened up. Uh, it's you know it's just still just barely barely warm. So it's just slightly warmer than room temperature now, and I mean just slightly. So let's see what it does and what it looks like. We'll take a little bit on a brush here, and get the light down here real good. And we'll paint it on here and see what it looks like. Well, I gotta tell you, it goes on kind of uh, thick. It, it's a little hard to spread with a brush. It's uh, a little on the thick side. I'm just curious if it's gonna dry. This is our dry test, so we'll have to give it at least 24 hours to know that. It's not a bad color. It's a little bit darker than I guess I was hoping for, but not not a terrible color. It's actually kind of pretty. But it's it's kind of a little bit on the smeary side, I'll have to say, as far as putting it on here. A little hard to get it smooth. Um, it's got dark and light areas there because it doesn't go on real smooth. We may have not cook the turpentine into it long enough that might be the problem it's a little too thick it may still be usable we'll have to wait and see how that dries but it's it's not a bad look it's a, it's a kind of a pretty color a little bit more brown amber than I was expecting you never know. Like I said, it was our very first attempt, and it could easily just be a total fail here. We'll give this 24 hours, and we'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. It's been 24 hours uh, since we finished the um, varnish, and it's pretty thick. Uh, it flows still. 
it's probably just a hair too thick to even use a brush on it. This is what it looks like. This is after setting for 24 hours right here and this you can see the color and everything. It looks nice. I like it but it's still stick really very sticky. It comes off on your finger there. This over here is the varnish that I actually purchased from, I believe from the UK. Uh, it was definitely across the pond and they shipped it to me. This is a clear varnish, oil varnish. Now it has not dried either and in the same amount of time. It's still just as wet as the, as the stuff I made. I was hoping that the varnish I made would take about 24 hours to get, you know, pretty firm. You know, like this is still way too tacky, in my opinion, for 24 hours. I didn't expect it to dry hard in 24 hours, but it should have maybe coated over to the point where it's pretty firm anyway. This, of course, at this point is... A total waste in my opinion since it's like this so I don't see any harm in trying to put some a little bit more oil in this and quite a bit more um, turpentine so you know we've got about this much space left and I'm gonna fill you know maybe oh I don't know a quarter of that space with oil and three-fourths of that space left with the turpentine. I'm going to put it in a pan of hot water or of water and I'm going to boil the water and leave this inside of this and uh, just and then stir it and see if we can mix it up and see if that does anything. I mean this is pretty much wasted already so I don't see that it's going to hurt anything to try. As you can see I've got the jar inside the pan and the water is boiling around there. It's been on there for about 10 minutes we're going to let it boil like that for quite a while, uh, probably an hour. And I'm going to stir it every so often, and we're just going to see what that does. Well, it's definitely thinned out again, and it seems to be mixed really well. It's only been on here for about 20 minutes. I'm going to turn the heat back up. I just turned it down and it quit boiling. I want it to kind of just be right at the edge of boiling. So we're turning it back up a little bit. I'm going to let it sit there for probably another 40 minutes or so. Well, the varnish has been cooling for a couple of hours and it's basically at room temperature now. And I'm going to go ahead and, and try a little bit of the on here as another test for drying. difference it's it's definitely going on smoother than it did the first time um, the other the first time it was just too thick this is just about the perfect consistency still a little darker than I was hoping for but on the other hand you know it looks pretty nice it's a decent varnish I would be happy with that if it will dry so we're going to have to go another 24 hours to see what happens with that. But that's definitely, that's acting like the stuff I bought from England now. I mean, that really went on just about like the stuff I bought from England. Soaks in a little bit. You know, I'll have a base coat of shellac under it, so it shouldn't soak into the wood too much. But right now, this is just going on bare wood. So we'll have to wait and see what it looks like tomorrow. I hope it dries. Well, I'm a little disappointed with the oil varnish so far. Here was my first test. This was painted Saturday afternoon after we let the varnish cool. And you can see it's still tacky sticky. This is the, I guess I'd call it commercially available varnish that I bought from the UK. Um, you know, I don't know, he's probably somebody like me that's making it and selling it, but it's not dry either. So I'm glad I didn't just take that right out of the bottle. That's this stuff here. I'm glad I didn't just take this and put it right on the mandolin because that would be a mess. In terms of the looks, 
what I made really looks nice. It's a gold color, but... And that was just on bare wood, by the way. This was over shellac. It's the same way. It hasn't dried at all. This, and that was all done Saturday. So yesterday I reheated it, added a little bit of linseed oil and turpentine. And this was just put on the bare wood, and it's kind of soaked in. It's not... It's kind of a little bit oily feeling, but it doesn't feel sticky. Um, so that was just on bare wood. This is the same stuff over shellac and it's still tacky too. Um, it feels like it possibly might dry if I let it set a while, maybe another two or three days. <laughs> That's still not quite good enough. I would like for it to start to firm up where it's not real sticky in 24 hours. It's okay with me if it takes two or three more days to cure hard but I'd like for it to at least not be sticky, gooey, wet after 24 hours. So, maybe I'll try taking my varnish, putting it in a bigger container, adding a little more turpentine, a little bit more linseed oil, and see what happens. Mostly turpentine. What can I lose at this point? Just time. Even even this varnish isn't going to work for me. I was really counting on this because, uh, you know, I, I bought oil varnishes before and they've been fine. But this so far hasn't dried at all. It's not easy being me. Monday late afternoon, day three. We started this on Saturday. I just shellacked this with some shellac, a, a clear shellac a little while ago, about 15 minutes ago. It's pretty much dry to the touch. I'm going to go ahead and put this oil varnish on it now. I've since added more turpentine, a little bit more oil in terms of linseed oil, and I boiled it for about another hour to and mixed, it stirred it a lot. So let's see what happens now. It, the uh, varnish looks more clear than it did in the past, I'll say that. It's a little bit tinted, but, but more clear. It spreads real easy now. But only time will tell if that's going to work. I like the color of it and like the clarity of it, so we might get lucky. You just never know. Well, finally, I'm happy to report that I think I've made a breakthrough on my varnish. This was put on this piece of wood uh, July 27th. Today is August 1st. So it's really five days. It was put on last Saturday. Today is Thursday. And you can see it looks really nice. It's a nice color and... You know, it's good sheen and it goes on smooth. It's just wonderful. But, but look, you know, you can see it's still just sticky and wet. You know, you, it just, that's five days, five solid days. It hasn't dried really at all. This was put on last night and it's, while I would say it's slightly tacky, um, you know, if you left your finger there, it would make a fingerprint, I'm sure. But it's it's nothing like this other. Give this another day, I think it's going to be dried hard it, the way it feels. It just feels like something that is drying. So what did I do differently? Well, the first thing I did was I thinned this down quite a bit with more linseed oil and turpentine, mostly turpentine, and I boiled it a couple of more times. I thinned it down two more times, actually. So it went on a lot clearer, which is what I really need, and even that test didn't work, because after four days with that, it's still not dry. So that didn't help that much, and you know, I know that the best oil varnishes take a long time to cure. But my problem with that here in my shop is I don't have a dedicated drying room that's dust free and you know the longer it takes the more likely it is to just be coated in dust. 
So, you know, maybe in a different environment that would work fine, but not in my environment. So I need something that dries like this. This, this isn't bad. I mean, it's still sticky a little bit, but nothing like these other, like nothing like this. This is just still wet. It's a difference, and I can tell this is going to dry. So what did I do differently? I went to the paint store and I bought some Japan dryer. That stuff must be incredibly powerful. They said only put two ounces of it in a gallon of, you know, mixture, whatever, uh, like paint or whatever. And it works only on oil products. I took eight ounces of my varnish, which is, I believe, one sixth is that right of 128 <laughs> I'm terrible on math I shouldn't ever do it in my head on on camera but anyway um, I I divided it out and so then I divided that two ounces by whatever and I converted that to grams so it turned out to be about three and and a half grams I think it was to the eight ounces of varnish that I had so I, I put in just a little bit, you know, just basically by the directions, and uh, it seems to be filling the bill. I don't see, I'm not even, I mean, if I held my finger there, it would leave a fingerprint. But uh, for the most part, it looks like it's drying. I think this is going to work. I'm going to give it one more day before I know for sure. But I'm going to conclude the video here because I'm pretty sure this is going to work fine. And this is the mixture that I'm going to put on the auction mandolin so it looks nice it's nice and clear you know it's shiny um, I think it's going to dry hard but before I put it on the auction mandolin I am going to confirm that but but I am going to conclude the video here assuming that it's going to go ahead and continue to dry I believe it will hope you've enjoyed this if you'd like to see more videos on the varnish, just let me know in the comments. I do plan on making another version of it, and the difference is I'm going to be more specific in the measurements. Thanks for watching.